Hello, today is April the 18th, 2020, a little over our calls. Last calls, all that the bulls had to do would be to gap over Thursday's high for the rally to continue. And since futures were up sharply, we didn't think that would be too hard to do. So that's what happened. Uh, Monday has had with the early high. Doesn't mean you won't gap down first. During the day, in the afternoon, MJT gave an ultimate signal to buy. Ultimately, that worked. It also gave a sell signal with an asterisk. I'll explain in a minute. And that one worked, too. Now, again, MJT just gives targets. And unlike other systems, which say buy or sell, this one just said there'd be a higher target and a lower target. When it's a given, you don't necessarily have a trade. But when we dropped first and the sell signal met its target, you knew you were at resistance and you knew there were, and you knew there were significantly higher prices coming. Even if you didn't play for the higher prices, at least the signal would warn you against sticking too long with a short position. So even if you did nothing but avoided staying short, it would have been helpful. Now there's an asterisk here because when I wrote the book, I had certain criteria for a sell signal being meaning a down move would stick or wouldn't have to retrace. One of which was that the low of the bar here would undercut a certain level, and that criteria was met. So according to the rules in the book, we didn't have to retrace. This is a totally separate signal here. But when I used to have a software program, the programmer programmed it wrong, and he based the signal based on whether this bar closed under that level. And it turned out that that works too. So according to that rule, any drop wouldn't stick. So we have two signals, one of which says we're going to drop to a target lower, and the other one of which says that any drop won't stick and will trade higher. And actually both of those things happen. Well, how about next week? The long-term forecasts aren't really my long suit, but here's a weekly chart and here's an 89-week moving average. Now, while it's not perfect, in general, if you're in a bull market, you stay over the 89-week moving average, and if you're in a bear, which is what I'm calling it, you stay under. So you can see if I'm right about this being a bear, and this is a bear market rally, we're really going just about as far as we should go, if that's going to work. Um, we have a new setup from DeMarc. We don't have to stop after we get to bar number nine, but it is resistance as well as a rally into the 50-day moving average, all of which offers resistance at Friday's high. Here's a wall into the close. The theory behind um, the wall is that institutions tend to do trading at certain times of the day when there's lots of liquidity in the time when there's probably the least amount of liquidity is just before the close on Friday. So the theory is you drop, you gapped up, dropped all day long. The theory is all this buying at any price, no pullbacks, could be short covering because it's unlikely institutions are behind it. If, it, if that's what it is, 
This will be reversed promptly Monday, ideally by gapping under this low. Doesn't have to be, but at least a gap down. If this is buying for real, it'll continue. So by Monday's open, you should know if that's a false move or it's the real thing. In general, if you're going up all day and you rally like this, it's just a continuation of the trend. Retail customers look at an all-day rally Friday and they're anxious to buy. But if you're dropping all day and it goes up like this, and this was just due to short covering, those are people who are closing shorts. They're not going to still be short Monday. But we know one left to buy, and this will get reversed. We will take off from where we left off on Friday, which is dropping all day. So we'll know Monday which of those things will happen. Now here's the wave count. The initial wave count we have was this being a five wave move down. I count this as a three wave structure. So that's killed because we've intersected this low. So I have to recount this as an ABC. And somewhere up here, we're going to have wave B. Now, the idea is we're going to travel over this line by the same distance we went under it. That's about 600 points. We're not there quite yet, but if you look, if we just piddle around for a few days, by the end of the week, next week, we are going to be there. And while it's not a stop and reverse, it would mean the target was being hit. So we're getting pretty close to going as high as that methodology predicted we would go. If you focus in on this rally, if you count this as an ABC, you've got nice fib ratios of C and A. You now have an ABC with C equal to A. Wave B, you can see, is a Fibonacci target of wave A. So if we stop here, it makes kind of a pretty picture. Now, just because this count works, it doesn't mean some other count doesn't work. But um, at least if it works here, it's one of the candidates for the end of the leg. And if you try to do it on smaller time frames, I can make it work, although I'm not thrilled with the count on this last leg up. And again, just because one count works doesn't mean it's the only count. Well, Monday's pattern has the early high, doesn't it? The patterns for next week doesn't mean you won't gap down. The Friday's late rally is the real thing. It should continue. And Monday's open. Let's do the short covering. We should gap down smartly. And that has very negative implications. There's a wall into the close. Moving average resistance. Wave count. All of which are working against the bulls. It's critical for continuation of the rally. Then bulls avoid a big gap down. If we have a big gap down, that would be the first step towards indicating that this rally was over. If we gap down, typically we re-challenge this high and go slightly over it. If that happens during the week, gapping down and retracing, we would meet the 600 points over that line that we've been talking about. So if we're just going to continue from here, it really is critical that we avoid that happening. So Monday's open is critical. This is a candidate, not the only candidate, for the end of the leg up. If we gap down smartly, that's the first signal that the party's over for the bulls. And if we don't, I don't have anything saying it stops just a few points higher. If we continue up, particularly if we go over that 89-week moving average, then this pattern isn't going to work. So we'll see how we open Monday, and that's today's call.